Okay, good morning, uh, everybody, and uh, welcome to this um, webinar. I'm, uh, I'm honoured to start off this webinar with a little hockey hiccup. Um, this is a joint venture of ITS um, Finland and ITS Netherlands Connect, and uh, I'm Heide Nijs. I'm Community Manager of Smart Mobility Embassy, and this is the uh, International Label of Connect. I am your moderator of today, and together with Alex, um, we will supervise this um, webinar. And um, before we, we we begin, we should um, we we should like to get over some ground rules to ensure that everybody has a productive and uh, positive experience. So um, your microphone will be muted, or please mute it to minimize some background. And um, you can see we uh, we will record this webinar for sending it out to members who could not join. And um, let's start off um, um, with this. So addressing to you today is the topic of traffic management. And as we all know, uh, traffic management is a crucial is issue that affects the daily lives of millions of people. And we are going to discuss the key strategies and initiatives uh, from both sides and um, to create a safer and more efficient mobility um, system. Um, looking at the programme, uh, we'll start off with an overview from the Finnish and from the Dutch side, and then we have a presentation from the city of Tampere and then from uh, the Dutch perspective. So um, with these few words, I would like to start off and introduce Kimmo, who um, is willing for me not to save last name because it's too difficult for me. So uh, Kimmo, the floor is yours. OK, thank you, Marie. And I uh, would also like to ask Alex if he could open that I can share my presentation because mm. The button is not working at the moment for me. Okay, let's see. Mm -hmm. Nice technical thing, just saying yes. all the meeting organizer and presentation can share, but. <laughs> yes. Maybe it's meant to be that I'm not uh, presenting anything. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh. Sorry for that. And you've got an hour before us in the, then in the Netherlands, and we've got our holiday, so um, we should be the ones who are not prepared for our presentation. I hope it's working. Okay, now, now. it's working. Now yeah, it's working. great. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. Good luck. OK, now you can see my presentation, I think. Yep. Yes. OK, my name is Kimmo Yliseurunen, and uh, thank you for inviting me to this uh, webinar. I will really shortly say something about the backgrounds from the Finnish point of view, and then we can go to other presentations which are more in details to, to the today's topic. So my name is Kimmo Yliseurunen. I'm coordinating and leading uh, Finnish National Programme for Sustainable Growth in Transport Sector. The programme aims to uh, promote export-driven growth in transport sector based on uh, the sustainable solutions uh, related to transport. This is also a good instrument uh, also to cooperation, like, like here between Netherlands and, and Finland. So it's a good uh, way to say something about it. So uh, we are targeting the growth uh, by exporting market, market proven transport innovations and solutions. And we are thinking that uh, it's it's like uh, having having a well working market here in Finland. It gives us, a, us an opportunity also to have a, something unique, something innovative to to be exported and, and to be uh, um, implemented in, co in cooperation with uh, with other partners abroad. So, and as you, as you know, that uh, we are thinking about in sustainable world, we are thinking about lots of footprints. We think also about the finger, fingerprints, meaning that uh, what we are providing from Finnish side and, and with our partners in, in, in abroad, we, we, can, we can change the things also in, in, in a larger scale. We also think that uh, the growth is made in ecosystems. 
unfortunately there are some Finnish uh, Finnish words in in that picture but uh, but just to say and highlight that there's lots of activities in in this area in this area in 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 transport and mobility sector and most of them are are, are done in in cooperation with between uh, different kind of organizations not only with with and between enterprises but also SMEs and 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 um, medium me, really small companies are are involved with uh, with big companies in these ecosystems and also together with uh, with our government and 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 cities this is this is the way how how Finnish companies and Finnish way to do these things just to highlight uh, some backgrounds for the program this is led by by a set of organizations mostly coming from uh, public sector but but also as the the goal is uh, for for the growth in in business there is uh, companies involved but four ministries uh, the biggest cities and agencies uh, business organizations and 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 also R&D involved and ITS Finland of course and something to take with you from my presentation is uh, to remember the future mobility finland.fi this is a web page where we have been collecting and we are collecting the Finnish excellence in transport sector future mobility makers innovations pilots experiences and news news cases stories blogs sort of uh, interesting things for for from uh, from Finnish side it also includes at the moment the, the highlights of, of uh, Finnish offerings, meaning that uh, we have identified uh, main offerings from the transport sector, like autonomous transport proven in all conditions, electrifications from software to batteries, certification, everyone knows mobility as a service, smart boards and maritimes, which are really interesting ones with remote piloting and, and that data-driven automation environmental measures because of the weather for example we have to know how, how to work with that and then technical things like data and connectivity which are the cornerstones for modern transport system and co corporate teamness and also digitalized rail systems digitized logistics and of course latest but not least automotive interested technologies we are not proving uh, we are not uh, providing any car brands but we are inside the cars in many ways so these are the highlights of of the offerings we have from the Finnish side and these are exactly selected based on the how we think about there is a world-class excellencies behind behind the the uh, organizations and and companies doing this and as I said this in this uh, re really uh, brief uh, introduction there is something to take you with is the future mobility finland.fi which is sort of a one-stop shop where you can find the crucial information related to the transport sector here in finland and you will have this presentation and then you can have a better look at these nine areas where we think about we are quite good cooperative uh, uh, partner for netherlands for example, it also includes links to uh, some uh, larger uh, offerings made by uh, our uh, national funding organization, collecting all the information from different aspects of transport to, to be uh, highlighted to you. Thank you, Kimo. Oh, you. Thank you, Kimo, for your presentation yep. and your insight on this um, on, on the program. And um, it was informative and insightful. It's it's an overview. So the um, the uh, the link to the website to uh, the future Finnish mobility that's a great one, and um, yeah. it's going to be good for everybody to look into that. And if we're sharing um, the presentation, the link will be there as well. So um, thank you again for sharing your your insights and. Um, now it's a turn to Mark Verhaeve. It's the program manager, smart mobility, um, and the board member of Co Connect ITS Netherlands, and he will be sharing an overview on traffic management. And um, Mark, if you're ready, um, the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you. Can you see my screen now? Yep. 
Okay. Well, good morning. Um, my name is Mark Verhagen, as Marije said. I'm one of the board members of uh, Connect, uh, which is also known in uh, uh, outside the Netherlands as ITS Netherlands. Um, and it's my pleasure to give a short introduction from uh, our network in the Netherlands. We think that uh, uh, collaboration between uh, ITS nationals is uh, very important, especially considering the significant developments in the field of traffic and transport in the Netherlands. With various initiatives underway in this area, it is essential for us to foster partnerships and work toward shared goals, leverage collective knowledge and expertise. And I think it's worth noting that the Netherlands has a keen interest in various topics related to mobility and trans transportation. Such there are uh, active travel, autonomous driving, EV charging, the automotive industry, data sharing and digitization, ports and airports, logistics and traffic management. And during this introduction, I will di di dive deeper into the topic of this webinar, traffic management. The geography of and population of the Netherlands and Finland are vastly different, as you may see. And this has implications for the mobility and transportation challenges faced by each country. We are, of course, a small and densely populated country with over 17 million inhabitants living on a land area of only 41,500 square kilometers. And in contrast of that, Finland is a large country with a land area of 380. 338,000 square kilometers, but with a lot, uh, a lot lower population density, with I think around 5.5 million inhabitants. And this, of course, means that our country faces significant challenges when it comes to managing traffic and transportation. With so many people living in such a small area, the country needs to ensure that its infrastructure can handle it, the high volume of the daily movements. While we are already quite proficient in traffic management, we recognize that mobility is much more than just, than just vehicles. Multimodal traffic management is currently being offered in the Netherlands by companies such as Swarco, Vialis, Goudappel, RHDHV, MapTM and Unix. These are all members of our network connects in the Netherlands. And we're pleased to have some of these companies represented in this webinar today. Two examples of successful traffic management projects in the Netherlands are Smartways and Socrates 2.0, which is an ongoing European project focused on centralizing vehicle management and data. However, to be even more efficient with traffic and movement management, we need to look at dynamically management of individual road users. This is the area where public-private partnerships between service providers and road managers became crucial, as seen in projects like Socrates 2.0 and the Urban Vehicle Access Regulation Agreements. And of course, in addition to vehicles, we need to consider other modes of transportation, such as bicycles. In urban areas, it's often faster to travel by bicycle than to drive by a car in the city center. And to facilitate, facilitate this, we must manage the flow of bicyclists effectively. The rollout of intelligent traffic light controllers and the detection of vulnerable road users through network management systems like FlowCube can help us with that. So I think we should work together. It is essential to note we cannot do this alone. We cannot achieve these goals on our own. Collaboration and scaling up are key to success, we think. So by exploring opportunities for mutual benefit, we can leverage each other's strength and to reach our goals. I'm, exout, I'm excited about the potential of workshops and, and uh, webinars like this between Finland and the Netherlands. And if you have any ideas after this uh, session, how we can work together, please let us know. So thank you for your attention. Thank you for the time to introduce ourselves. And Maria, back to you. Thank you. Thank you, Mark, for your presentation and the overview on uh, on Dutch mobility. There certainly was um, an overlap in the presentation of Kimo, looking at not only uh, what we're doing in, in both countries, but also on the excellence we have on um, being happiest countries, being, and that's the one we should explore as well. 
Um, and if we share the presentation, you will see that we will um, uh, have some complementary um, backgrounds and uh, issues there for to come. So thank you, Mark, again for um, highlighting these um, the importance of working together and um, and is expressing the public private um, cooperation. Uh, thank you again. And um, our next two speakers are from from Finland. Uh, Happily for me, they're easy names to say. So uh, the first speaker is Mika Kulmola, project manager of the city of Tampere, and he will provide us with uh, an overview and the initiatives being undertaken by the city towards uh, sustainable mobility. Um, so Mika, the floor is yours. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good morning. My name is Mika Kulmola, project manager of the city of Tampere. And also chairman of, of ITS Factory. My presentation is it's away. So uh, I have a number of slides, but I go a few of them quickly through, but uh, shortly a big picture of what we have done and what kind of uh, strategy level plans we have, and then some actions, what we have done latest. Uh, the big, big, picture the, we have a four years mayor program and uh, digitalization and smart mobility is quite quite uh, heavily here in our our mayor program so we have a quite a good political background developing things and of course as uh, our city strategy mentioned we have a uh, big goals for example decarbonize our city and this city strategy is a, a long-term plan how we can make our city to sustainable, smart, and, and so on. And, and of course, transport traffic is one of our, our big, big goals and, and key points in, in our, our goals. Uh, then the, the mobility plans. Uh, we have a few uh, citywide programs, carbon neutral Tampere roadmap, over 100 mobility actions, what we have to do to reach our goals. Then we have a development program, data-driven city for citizens. So how can we utilize data, collect data and utilize data to develop our city? And then quite a new sustainable open mobility plan. And there's also a number of actions, what we have to do in our city. And that was a winner of few prizes also that some very good good plan then to ideas we have had a strategies number of strategies but uh, latest was 2018 to 2022 there were our new tram and digitalization was the the key points of course automated transport and uh, we have done it uh, together with ITS Factory, which is, is a local network for ITS companies and receipts and authorities. And, and that's a very good way to, to, to make this kind of developing because we have challenges and we have goals. And then we have very active network. We are, we are, we are also a local division and partner of ITS Finland now. And that's a very good way to, to make this this uh, quite challenging job together with, with active companies. And I think this is a quite good win-win situation to, to us and also to, to, to our universities and receipts and, and companies. And now we are making a new idea strategy and a uh, few points. Digitalization, of course, it's a, it's a very hot topic, I think. Uh, now and, and in, in future, and now because of tram and, and uh, travel chains, opening data, and all kind of uh, city development systems and, and city de development. And now we are also making the ITS factory strategy at the same time because of that. I I'm, mentioned that what kind of products and services we need and what kind of innovations we can we can do together with with uh, companies uh, as mentioned traffic system improves with 
because of new tram system and uh, and uh, new strategies, as Kimmo Ylisiurunen mentioned that that the, 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 the new program in, in Finland and our our strategies. Uh, city development, we have growing quite fast. We have uh, in city center, we have many of new places and new development projects. New, for example, the Tieranta is a new neighborhood near the, the city center, uh, five to six kilometers old factor area. Now we are planning the, the rails and, and tram to that area. And, this kind of uh, city city development projects and and plans we have in city centrum we have a railway station here and and uh, and uh, a new arena and then now we are building new city centrum and uh, the the new arena is uh, one one is good example how we can we have made uh, new decisions and new buildings in our city and i think we are now one of uh, uh, best places in in finland as we have uh, receipts in 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 finland and and uh, tampere is quite good results for these receipts and uh, Active plans, for example, this this city development area, Nokia Nokia Arena. We have also, of course, traffic management here because we are in the city centrum. We have quite new um, traffic management system because we have to the, the safety reasons. We have to make close all the streets when there are main main uh, major major events in in. Uh, in uh, arena, more than five, eight thousand expect spectators, and we have to close the streets, and we have a brand new system in city centrum. There's a uh, lots of information signs and and variable message signs and closing closing lanes and 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 system traffic light systems and and uh, information utilizing social media and, and so on. There are some pictures of, of system. It's quite difficult because of our winter conditions, but uh, but uh, one example of, of uh, traffic management systems we have we have made and here's a back end system and also open interfaces to other other systems. Lots of data and step by step closing streets and, and so on. Then some infra projects, city tunnel 2016, and and our first tram line is now ready and it's very popular. And now yesterday there was a decision that continue develop, uh, planning the, the next two phases to southern part and, and eastern part of, of, of Tampere. Here's some pictures of our brand new tram and, and uh, also we have a receipts and and uh, cooperation uh, for example this smart tram project uh, and luli luli car there's a living lab system and living lab tram can make a cooperation and developing systems in in tram it's one example of co cooperation between authorities and, and uh, business. Then automated traffic, few examples. 2014, our local government made an initiative that we have to, to develop robot cars and automated vehicles. And we have made uh, plans. And uh, the next, the, the first thing was that we have to, to develop automated theater traffic to to tram when we have it's 2021 and few projects Sohojoa and Hierranta, few pilots and now we have a main project that show project 
it's a very big project in, in Europe and in, uh, in uh, Hervanta area. We have our pilot site and last winter we had a uh, 3.5 kilometers round in Hervanta area with seven with nine stops and 10 minutes interval. We had two this kind of Toyota Pro Ace vehicles, automatic vehicles in our winter conditions. And, and that was our first step of our pilot. And now we have uh, in Hervanta and in Lintohytti a new phase of, of our, our, our pilot. There is uh, Easy Mile cars and our tech cars now in, in the area. And, Next step is the, the remote control because of when you go to to next step, we have now safety drivers, but in next step we we have to drive without without safety drivers and remote control. Uh, CITS systems, Timo will tell more about these systems, and then the the, the, the tra traffic data, which is the fuel of, of all kinds of services. We have opened almost all our, our data and ITS Factory Wiki is a good place to check that what kind of uh, service, uh, open data we had, traffic data. And now we have a new IE2 platform also. We have collected our data and we can utilize. Timo will tell more also that, that uh, register plate recognizing and and, and uh, that project different kind of uh, data and and uh, and utilizing it in our tra traffic real time traffic situation cameras and and uh, floating car data and and so on here's some examples how we can utilize it social media and different kind of uh, information systems, parking and variable message signs and, and so on. Then the, the last one, traffic lights. It's a, I think what one basic traffic management systems in every city and lots of priorities now. Emergency vehicles, we have this kind of Holly system, then adaptive control for tram, very high priority for tram priorities for buses and cyclists and different kind of systems. Lots of data and utilizing data for traffic light operating. So that was number of slides quite, quite shortly. But uh, hope you can give us some, some uh, examples what we have done. Thank you. Mika, Mika, our gratitude for this presentation. There are lots of projects going on. I saw trams, I saw traffic lights, I saw traffic management, um, and it would be good to share your presentation and look at it yeah. some more. And um, the pictures were great. And um, winter conditions seem not so bad as we think in Holland, like f f rivers frozen over and um, heavy vehicles crossing ice. So. Um, uh, maybe that's uh, for our next talk. So uh, thank you very much. I'd like thank to you. introduce to you um, our next speaker. And um, it's Timo Mayala. I hope, I, again, I say it uh, uh, correctly. He's the CTO, CEO of Nodion, and he will focus on uh, the role of traffic management, modern tra of traffic management. And as, um, as, um, um, I will give you the floor to you, uh, Timo. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'll try to share my presentation first first to you okay well hello everybody and uh, good day my name is uh, Timo Mayala and I represent a company named Nodeon uh, Miko was showing you a huge amount of uh, huge amount of uh, data from the city of Tampere and very nice pictures. Unfortunately, I'm not living. I, I, we, we, are, we are with Nico here here in, in our office and we are not living in the city of Tampere, which is the <laughs> ranked the most attractive city in the Finland at the moment. But uh, 
we live a little bit up north where the Nodeon headquarters is, is located as well. I, I used the opportunity first show one slide of the company. Uh, we are actively operating in the ITS business sector in, in quite wide variety. Uh, the roots of the company comes from, comes from the large road infrastructure projects where we where we uh, provide uh, designing, implementing uh, phase solutions and, and services, mostly tunnel highway environments. Also actively operating in the traffic management, the ITS traffic data measuring solutions, and um, also we bring to the Finnish domestic markets uh, devices and, and system from, from other, other countries and markets uh, work at, uh, act as a redistributor in, in those cases. We uh, dive, dive, dive to the, into the three different projects actually in this presentation share some experiences, uh, especially from private sector point of view, here in my, my presentation. Uh, mostly we, we, the cases are related to CITS, and all the cases are actually related to city of Tampere. City of Tampere. The last, the third one is, is uh, one traffic analysis case. Uh, ANPR based solution. I have two slides each, so Marine, please update it. Up, update me if if I'm if I'm using too much time. <laughs> you're you're fine. You have um you have still like five more minutes, so it's oh, okay. <laughs> that's, great. <laughs> that's great. Okay. First of all, uh, let, let, let's go to the first CITS example, which is actually of also one, one example of the cooperation between countries, because what we have done here, uh, we, we, we heard that the Nordic Way 3 research and development project, which is the kind of a um, joint Nordic CITS pilot project, actually series of the projects. Now we are in a third phase, it started 2015 and uh, uh, co-financed by European Union. But anyway, uh, when, when, when we as an audience heard that uh, third phase of the project includes the CITS pilots in the city of Tampere, uh, we actually reacted to this information by uh, contacting Dutch uh, CITS, CITS player Monoch, which has been a, a provider for CITS data aggregator solution to the talking traffic project in Netherlands. And uh, we thought that it would be nice to nice to cooperate with them and, uh, and test the solution also in Finland. And we managed to, to, to actually actually uh, sell this idea to the project and the, to the city and what we have been doing now during this year and actually last year if i rem remember correctly we started at the beginning of 2022 with this project and uh, now at the moment it's uh, we have a show kind of a small small CITS ecosystem established now in, in, in the city of Tampere. There is a 12 intersection con intersections connected to the TLX, two different TLC providers, Svarco and Italian La Semaforica. And, uh, and uh, what we, we, are, we are now testing, testing uh, actually basic if signalized intersection CITS services services in the city of Tampere. Probably the, the one, one, one major point in this, in this project is also worth men mentioning that we, in this project, uh, the city of Tampere and Finn Traffic Road, which is the other, other customer for us here, they are not actually providing CITS services to the vehicle drivers. 
they are more like uh, validating the TLC data in, in this project. And Rumble is uh, is a responsible party for for doing this validation. So actually, data integrity and quality level of the data is the is the key here. In addition to this, we as a node, we are testing our own as card products, uh, providing these signalized intersection day one services type to green and a closer closer in this tamper ecosystem, which you can see the pictures from the right hand side in this in this slide. Uh, this as a first example, what we are actively now doing in 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 the city of Tampere. This is a yes, this is a kind of a different project, but very much relates to the the, the previous one. This was started this year, beginning of this year. The the uh, it was started by Traffico, which is uh, agency, state agency, Finnish Transport and Communication Agency, and uh, uh, it relates also to the very same, very same R and D project, Nordic Way Three. Uh, we we together with the state-owned research institution VTT, who were selected as a provider for this project, and uh, uh, project aims to pilot new CAITS technologies, which, which actually are not so largely deployed or tested even in the European level. It's a CV2X PC5 communication methods, short distance CITS deployment. Uh, we are testing also the uh, public key infra infrastructure PK PKI signing uh, in this, in this project and uh, at the same time we would like to create the deployment where we have in parallel long distance and short distance CITS communication in place and we are doing the validation of the data and, and uh, telecommunication delays in this in this project uh, yes actual services we deploy here and says uh, once again the clothes are time to green and uh, and uh, we have uh, partners here in in uh, short distance communication part we are we are using consignia consignia devices and uh, in the long distance part we use the telex ecosystem here here but yes Validation here at the same time it's the essential part of the of the project. There is a lot of different kind of methods where we where we want to validate the data and the delays, use the zero based based uh, testing methods in this project. So there was the two CITs related actively now now going on projects in the city of Tampere. Then I have the little bit older one example from the from the traffic measuring traffic analysis side. Uh, we, we, we have all, already quite long history actually actually providing this system for the city of Tampere. We, we started to uh, measure all the inbound routes of the of the city 2018. Uh, created this kind of ANPR based analysis system, which, uh, which as a base, of course, used the ANPR cameras, but the actual point is to integrate to the national vehicle registration database and collect and integrate data from there so we can, we can get the uh, vehicle origins, uh, Postal code areas where the cars are coming from, amount of low emission vehicles, CO2 classes, uh, motive power classes, like what is the amount of full electric cars and hybrid cars in these inbound routes. And uh, actually, the point here, especially in the city of Tampere, is that we have been doing this already for four, five years, so we can we can see the progress 
long-term changes in the, in the city traffic systems, if there are changes, especially in the motive powers like the diesel cars, uh, the amount of diesel cars is actually decreasing dramatically and the number of, of low emission cars is increasing dramatically. dramatically strictly and uh, and uh, uh, that 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 system gives a very handy tool to really really uh, follow these changes in the traffic system. I also share one one experience from the GDPR point of view because it has been also the kind of a hot topic, uh, especially in in, in camera based systems. We we. Uh, City of Tampere is, is one example of the of the long term measuring, but we also do a traffic do traffic studies here in Finland a lot with the cities, which has uh, some sort of need to understand the traffic system better. Uh, the, this, this example comes from the city of Kotka. City held this uh, this summer event every year, and they had a lot of visitors coming to these maritime festivals uh, yearly. And they wanted to understand more about the actual visitors of the festival, especially from where these are coming from and uh, and, and, and how much of the visitors are coming to the city. But what we actually faced here, there was a uh, private person created request for clarification to the Finnish Office of the Data Protection and, and uh, reason was of possible GDPR violation. It was a quite hard and, and, and actually uh, hard phase for us it, it, because it, this is quite new topic at, uh, in, in European level at that time and uh, there, was, uh, there were always, almost 5,000 these requests in this in this agency table waiting for the waiting for the, <laughs> their decisions to be made and uh, it, it took almost two years for us that we we got the answer from this from this uh, uh, office Finnish office of data protection but yes the the results were were actually pretty good for us it was uh, uh, the main point is that cities they can do this kind of operations in their area. They have they they are public authorities with special responsibilities to responsibilities to develop city environment and traffic system, but the roles in the in the uh, actually data handling is is important in in this case the city is the data controller, uh, they they are responsible for the data privacy policy documents and the impacts of of, of using using. Uh, personal data, and we as a service provider, we 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 are the data processor role, and the informing drivers actually was was one of the one of the main points which which was included to the results. It it needs to have a two level procedure where you where you use the roadside information sign some kind of sign uh, that should be in place the first level information. And then you should have available the GDPR documents somewhere should be downloadable from the internet. So there, I just wanted to share one experience from the from the GDPR point of view relating to to camera based uh, measuring. Uh, yeah, that was the last one. Oh, thank you, thank you. I gave you a little bit more time because it was too interesting to 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 listen to you. So um. Thank you for your presentation and your for for your insights on, on new projects and uh, projects that was uh, that were in the past, um, and for exceeding our time a little bit for the Q and A's. We will skip those ones and we'll um, have uh, our Q and A's at the end of the presentation of um, from the Dutch side. Um, so thank you again, uh, thank you again, and we'll go on with the presentation a little bit um, earlier. I'm going on to. Um, to our final two speakers and starting off with Tobu, Toby. Toby Lures, he is a senior policy uh, officer um, of dynamic traffic management in the city of Maastricht, a city in the south of the Netherlands. And um, uh, Toby, the floor is yours. Thank you. Um, 
Uh, welcome everyone. Um, uh, I've been working for the city of Maastricht for 15 years now. Uh, Maastricht is a city in the very south of the Netherlands. Uh, we are a very compact uh, city with a um, large historical center. Uh, we have around 120 inhabitants and our city is about five uh, by five kilometers uh, big. Um, so we are a compact city, as I told you. We've got our 40 percent of our border uh, aligned with Belgium. Um, so that gives a, a special place to our city in the network of uh, international roads. Um, for the city of Maastricht, dynamic traffic management is very important because uh, we have a small historical center that has a large tourist attraction uh, as well to the uh, Dutch people as well to uh, German and Belgium uh, visitors. Um, I've been working uh, for 15 years, as I told you, um, for the city of Maastricht. And I'm working in the uh, section dynamic traffic management. We are uh, positioned very vertical through our organization of the city. Uh, so that means we are uh, um, responsible for all the traffic management cities, uh, systems in the city, hardware and software. And we are uh, responsible for the policy, but also contract management, tenders, technical and functional management, uh, intersection designs and the realization of projects. So uh, our daily day to day work is very diverse and we. Um, yeah, it means and now I'm present presenting to you, but I'm also uh, on the phone getting messages from um, people outside that are trying to uh, resolve issues regarding traffic uh, safety management systems. Um, let's see next slide. Um, public private corporation. Uh, the city of Maastricht has a, a private public-private cooperation with QPark for exploiting the parking structures in the city of Maastricht. They are doing that for 30 years in our city. So they are uh, exploiting all of our uh, parking infrastructure. Um, but that gives us as a city, it gives us a, a very quality, uh, high quality network of parking facilities, as you can see in the picture. Um, we have uh, quarterly meetings with uh, QPark about all uh, um, things regarding the parking systems they exploit. Um, for instance, uh, uh, tariffs uh, in the city, parking infrastructure. Um, but for us as a dynamic traffic management, it's very important. They are playing with us for our parking guidance systems. This is shown on the left side of the picture. Um, we are now using a, a German Swaco system as a backend for this uh, parking guidance system, but we are now transferring to the Mobi Maestro platform from Technolution. So um, we are now getting the data from the uh, parking infrastructures into our central management system, but we are not yet uh, able to send out the data to the uh, um, signs outside. So we are developing that right now. Um, that means we are uh, having everything coming together in our traffic management system, as you can see uh, on the left side. And uh, that means uh, our, our traffic light controllers are in there, uh, but also uh, uh, the uh, you can see the building car data, and you can see the uh, parking infrastructure. And those three data sources combined um, look out for. Uh, um, or traffic management rules. We've got an autonomous system that's based on uh, these three different data sources, and it makes decisions based on uh, uh, things that are happening and predefined rules. Um, as you can see on the right side of the picture, um, when there are, um, we call them uh, top dagen. If I translate that to the English, it means they are uh, 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 great days, but they are not so great for the uh, traffic in the city of Maastricht, because on those top days, uh, um, the Germans or and the Belgians have a holiday, but we in the Netherlands don't. So all shops are closed in uh, those countries, but in the Netherlands, all shops are open. So you can imagine on a free day, they all come to the city of Maastricht and want to uh, um, shop in the city center. On those days, uh, all the uh, parking infrastructure on the west side of the city 
on the west side of the Maas, uh, uh, the river uh, dividing our city, um, are completely full. So um, by 10, 11 hours in the morning, all the parking systems are uh, to zero, and we have uh, um, uh, parking guidance, uh, people outside telling uh, cars to go to the other side of the river because mostly there are still uh, some spots left on the east side of the river. Um, but we also try to do that with our traffic lights. We have our uh, standard guiding rules. When there is a, a traffic jam up ahead in the uh, morning or in the evening rush hour, we try to dose the uh, cars to our city based on logical rules. So when there is a traffic jam up ahead or the speed drops or um, other um, events occur, uh, then we uh, take decisions to uh, steer the uh, traffic to our city. And our traffic lights are our main source of uh, uh, steering power. And uh, we do that by um, giving more or less green time and giving a certain red time. So mainly when we are dosing the traffic, we uh, um, decrease the uh, green time and we increase the red time for those directions. Um, city of Maastricht had a, a highway throughout our city for many years uh, that has now been placed in a tunnel, um, but that made the city of Maastricht have an enormous traffic jam on the north side of the city every uh, morning rush hour. And on all parallel uh, local routes, traffic was going to the city center. And that, that was the base for our dosing system. Uh, so we have, uh, as you can see on the left uh, north side of the city, we have some traffic lights uh, on just straight roads. And on the straight roads, uh, we have the ability, have the ability to dose uh, incoming traffic from, for example, on this side from Belgium. We had that all around the city, so we could uh, dose uh, incoming traffic based on uh, measurements in the inner city center. Um, now the highway has been uh, put into the tunnel and there's no uh, um, there's no traffic jams more every day, but we have them on uh, only on the top days. So we have a special program that is uh, committed with Q Park as a parking uh, infrastructure uh, management and uh, with the inner city um i can show uh, no it's picking here um with the retailers of the city uh, we also um talk with them about how we manage traffic during those top days so it's a, a common operational picture that we designed with all those parties together um how do we uh, measure those it's an autonomous system as i told you Mainly we use the uh, traffic light controller data and it's live data coming from the uh, traffic lights. So um, event based and we get speeds, intensities, traffic jams. We combine that with the floating car data and the pay parking information to get a, a global picture of what's happening. And with autonomous rules, we uh, base the traffic uh, to our city. Um, and lately we are it's already mentioned earlier by other presentations, but in the Netherlands, we're also working on the Internet and Traffic Light Controller. It's a Dutch, uh, a little bit older version we have now. On the green side, you can see uh, the uh, Traffic Light Controller, the TLC facility, and uh, next to it is the ITS application. Um, the TLC facility you should see as the body. It gives uh, away the red light, the green light, the loops are, are connected to it and it's controlling the security of the application. Then there's the ITS application, that's the brain of the uh, um, traffic light. Uh, this can be uh, um, done locally in the traffic light on site, but it's also possible to host this in the cloud. Um, so thirdly, there's a risk facility. Uh, you should see that as the eyes and the ears of the uh, traffic light controller. And, um, this communicates with the TLEX, uh, already mentioned in the finish. We now call it the uh, UDAP in the Netherlands, the Urban Data Access Platform, uh, because we are not only connecting traffic lights to it, but also all the sources. Uh, in the blue circle, there are the cloud service providers that are uh, um, uh, bringing the data from the cluster tree parties that are the um, apps on the phones, um, 
to the urban data platform where we can use the uh, data we get into the uh, risk facility. The risk facility places the incoming uh, traffic onto a map so the ITS application knows where the cars are so it can uh, do logical uh, smart things with it. Um, we also have other services in the yellow brick. Uh, it gives, is uh, giving uh, um, freight information, but also a priority for um, uh, ambulances, um, fire uh, trucks, and police. Um, this was my last slide. So uh, this was my presentation for today of the city of Maastricht, how we are implementing uh, traffic management as a small city. Thank you. Thank you, Toby. Thank you, Toby, for your insight. And uh, from a compact city, um, there are a lot of issues with international traffic. We understand, especially during a top day, uh, top day, um, great days is a great translation, but not a great day for people in traffic management in Maastricht. I, I understood. Um, so, Job, um, um, you're the last uh, ones um, of the presentation. And um, because I know you a little, I will give you the time to um, 10.38, can you manage? <laughs> I, I I always can for sure. And I think a, a lot of um, a, a valuable insights already came about. So I think I can only, um, add, um, yeah, I, I cannot uh, even compete with that. So I'll, I'll just uh, add it in with some um, innovation activities that we are um, um, involved in as a company and as a Dutch um, uh, organizations, uh, uh, um, a lot of which are also a member of, uh, of Connect. Um, I'll very quickly uh, share some uh, 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 finished uh, innovation project that we were involved in in the context of traffic management 2.0 and also done some ongoing activities that uh, provide, uh, I think, concrete basis for further collaboration uh, between, uh, between the Netherlands and Finland um, and maybe further discussions uh, during the ITS uh, Congress in Lisbon. Um, so, from a uh, technolution point of view, uh, we oftentimes approach the uh, ITS domain from our um, uh, traffic management platform that we provide uh, called Mobi Maestro. So, this is a, an example of what it looks like. It fills in the whole uh, layer between all the, the sensors and actuators on the streets, uh, as we've also just seen in, in the Maastricht. Um, uh, towards the operator in the traffic management center, providing them an overview of what's going on um, uh, in the uh, in the streets, in the cities, and, and in the regions, and also um, uh, giving them the several ways of how to how to manage that. So, what are my options here? Uh, what's the scenario that I can activate? Um, uh, in quite some different uh, views and, and modalities. So this is an example from Copenhagen because the, the platform is um, used in all for almost all traffic management centers in the Netherlands, but also in uh, Sweden, Denmark, Norway, uh, the UK and the US. Um, uh, and from Copenhagen point of view, you see here um, uh, the, the viewers for the vehicles, for uh, real time uh, traffic information for cyclists in the city center, uh, variable message signs and all kinds of other incidents. Uh, around the city. Um, and while we were exploring the concept of traffic management 2.0, um, uh, we are an active partner in the in the Artico innovation platform where the, the concept is being discussed uh, quite a bit. Um, so uh, 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 th this whole collaboration in the different forms between public and private entities in, uh, in the technical concepts, but especially also in the different governance structures that you need for uh, urban mobility, for regional mobility, for um, uh, um, connecting micro mobility to traffic management centers, uh, implementing uh, UVARs, well, all these different concepts come about. So quite a lot of work is being done on, on how that governance uh, would work and how these different stakeholders could collaborate uh, and within the Netherlands we had quite some initiatives in um, further exploring that in concrete innovation projects. So I'll, I'll give you two examples of that. One being indeed it also it already was mentioned the Socrates 2.0 project um, where we explored so what are the different roles in the options that public uh, and private stakeholders have? So on the left side here, you see the blue boxes where we try to um, uh, write down together with all the partners in the project, the different um, uh, goals and the different um, uh, sensors and actuators that public road authorities might have. Uh, and on the right side, you see the green boxes for uh, a private navigation provider in this uh, uh, example. 
uh, all the different goals and the options that they might have. And then we started exploring what if an incident occurs on a highway, for example, a road authority wants to reroute this traffic, um, and then um, uh, how could a private traffic management, uh, a, a, a private navigation provider collaborate with the public traffic management center? And quite some work is being done on, and this is quite a complex picture, but I invite you to um, um, uh, look at it further in, uh, uh, if you have more time, but we decided on four different, and these are the red boxes in the middle, four different um, uh, uh, roles in between you would need to collaborate uh, between these two stakeholders in jointly activating their own actuators uh, and having a, a coordinated approach in traffic management. So um, uh, one was being the network monitor, trying to get all this data from the public and private side together into a common operational picture. Um, uh, one was the strategy table to jointly align our different uh, goals that we might have as organizations. The network manager would then give all the the inputs that we would all have. So what's our understanding of what the traffic management situation at this point being is? And what are the goals that we want to achieve? And how could we activate scenarios to achieve those goals? And then the assessor role into checking what has actually been achieved in activating all these different um, uh, scenarios that we all have and what's the impact that we jointly gain. So as an example of what are the different roles in collaborating between public and private stakeholders, uh, unfortunately, already uh, the, the Nordic Way 3 project was being mentioned. I took an example of the Nordic Way 2 project that was just before that, where we were an active partner, also in the Nordic Way 3 uh, project, unfortunately. Um, and a nice example from that is the use case that we were involved in in Gothenburg, where um, uh, 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 public uh, road authority, so the, the municipality in this regard, could draw geofences in the city centre with certain uh, digital policy related to it. So the, in this example, a zero emission zone uh, that was then shared uh, through the Gothenburg uh, city um, uh, city portal with an interchange cloud where all different OAMs could then um, extract this information and use it for their own uh, vehicles. One of them being the Volvo, uh, and then if a hybrid Volvo vehicle would enter the city center uh, and then a zero emission zone was activated there, it could automatically shift from a, a fossil fuel drivetrain to full electric drivetrain. And really then emphasizing this, uh, this policy that was being activated by the public road authority. Um, so these are two projects that have been finished and indeed a, a Nordic Way 3 is now ongoing and further extending these different use cases. Um, and I think a nice example of how this came into being in operations from our point of view is how we use um, uh, messages from end users of the navigation uh, service ways to have a real time um, incident management for a road authority in the Netherlands. So um, uh, here we implemented where if uh, end users of ways see an incident occurring, they can then send the message in their own navigation app. Um, we would then extract that information and assess it. So is it, a re is it a reliable message, for example? Do we get uh, multiple messages? And therefore, it uh, indeed should be a, a, re a reliable message. Um, this message was being geolocated in the different geo zones that were um, drawn for a, a road authority, so Amsterdam in this example. Um, and then the, the traffic management center would get this information of someone is um, seeing an incident occurring here. Um, it would be shown as a pop-up message in the traffic management center saying an incident has been detected. Do you want to check if there's indeed an incident? Uh, and then the road authority would be able to check is there a camera there? Well, in this regard, there is. So uh, look at the camera messages for uh, um, for this specific incident, assess if there's actually something going on. And then if so, uh, the operator could click yes. Um, and then uh, it would get an automated suggestion of all the different um, uh, scenarios that could be activated to relieve that situation, including also um, getting service vehicles there to uh, manage the incident itself. So I think quite a nice way of using these uh, private information streams to for uh, quite effective and real-time incident management from a, a public transport point of view. And then two um, uh, examples of ongoing um, uh, innovation activities where, where the, the, the call to action for all the audience here also is get in touch if this aligns with your innovation roadmaps as well. Um, one is being what's the role of the ITS domain to play in um, uh, maintaining our electricity grids in regard to EV charging. 
So we're looking into, um, uh, for example, this is the, the traffic intensity of a Dutch highway in the Netherlands, where you see a morning rush hour and an evening rush hour appearing in the, in the graph. And this translates quite directly to how we see electric vehicles being charged in the Netherlands. So the orange graph here is charging transactions that are being started at charging points located at office uh, buildings. So you see a very strong peak in the morning rush hour when people arrive at their office. And the blue line is people um, uh, starting charging transactions in residential areas. So you see people coming home. Um, and here you see a very direct relation of having congestion and rush hour in the mobility sphere having impacts on the electricity grids. Um, and, and what we also do in another domain in tech evolution is provide um, a prognosis uh, um, software for grid management operators. Um, uh, and one of the scenarios that we see there is that for residential areas in the Netherlands, if the uptake of electric vehicles really sets through, then we really run into trouble in some instances. So um, we are exploring what's the role of the ITS domain to play, uh, for example, through navigation providers that know that there's an electric vehicle arriving at a charging point in 30 minutes time. Um, can we do something with that information and prepare for this charging session to be started and therefore try and relieve the grid in some way? So just as an innovation, um, uh, a, a frame of mind that we will be exploring in the next uh, few uh, months and years. Um, and another one, a very concrete one, is being the uh, uh, ongoing project Modi, um, where we are exploring uh, uh, what is needed for autonomous uh, heavy duty trucks to drive between the port of the Netherlands and the port of uh, um, uh, Mots in Norway. Um, and uh, the whole road in between. So all the road authorities in between are also uh, uh, involved. And one of the things we'll be particularly be exploring here is related to traffic management 2.0 because we will be looking into how would uh, fleets of autonomous vehicles, so in this regard, uh, logistical heavy duty trucks, how can they collaborate with traffic management centers that they will meet on this route? So um, you'll have um, uh, uh, larger uh, fleets of very intelligent and maybe even autonomous vehicles that are being managed by private fleet managers, logistical operators, or whatever. Um, uh, what are their goals and what, what's their way in maintaining their fleet? Uh, and given that these are quite large numbers, how could that also be translated to what a traffic management center does for collective uh, public traffic management and what's the role in between. So also in that regard, um, a, a lot of innovation in that sphere. Um, yeah, and uh, on that uh, uh, bombshell, I'll, I'll leave you hopefully a bit inspired. Um, uh, get in touch if this aligns with your uh, passion and your innovation roadmaps. And also uh, uh, please feel free to uh, meet us in, uh, in Lisbon. We'll be involved in three different uh, sessions and also be running around on the Nordic Pavilion. So um, thanks a lot. Um, and. Uh, yeah, I'll give the floor back. Thank you. Thank you, Job, for he exceeded only two minutes. So uh, thank you again. <laughs> thank you for your insights. There was there was a lot to share, like on new and old innovations and um, um, also looking forward to see each other in, uh, in Lisbon and join up with a lot of Finnish people um, because we exceeded our time. Just a, <laughs> we only have five minutes left. Um, and I saw one question from Ian on mobility hubs in the city of Tampa, but I think there was already an answer. Um, so I think I should end this webinar um, or um, somebody should just raise his hand if he has an urgent question. Oh, Ma yes, uh, Marco, I, yeah. I think there's a one uh, question. Yes, please. Yes, uh, one, one, one question. Uh... I think that traditionally in traffic management, we have worked quite a lot with fluency, efficiency, safety of transport system. And nowadays, at least in Finland, I think everywhere, we are talking more and more about emissions. And um, do you have some kind of uh, system uh, tracking CO2 emissions or measuring them? And do you use that information in your kind of traffic management uh, processes? I ask in this to uh, to your per uh, Marco. Uh, all of you from from, uh, from the Dutch side. If, well, your your can you have an answer? Yeah. 
yeah, maybe maybe Toby also knows. Uh, from my point of view, we have been involved in in projects uh, indeed with real time measurements and then re uh, responding with certain traffic management scenarios. Um, uh, our experience is that real time um, measuring this is quite uh, difficult in the long run, um, so that the sensors reduce in reliability. Um, so therefore, oftentimes we make um, um, a use of models uh, in um, real-time assessment of what the um, air quality or CO2 emissions might be. Uh, but we are still ongoing in uh, if, if there are opportunities arising there to further explore that. You're mute, Marit. Yeah, you're still muted, uh, Maria. Oh, I'm still muted. Oh, Jop, I'm sorry. Um, there's a question on 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 ways and how many uh, people are using ways in the Netherlands. Do you know, or like percentage wise, from all the providers? I I wouldn't know that. Um, uh, indeed, uh, uh, quite some. I think uh, it's um, uh, among the top of the different uh, navigation providers um, uh, in the Netherlands. Uh, as for GDPR discussions in this regard, the 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 the, the privacy information is fully uh, owned and um, uh, retained by uh, Waze itself. Um, so no other parties receive um, uh, any traceable information. Um, uh, from a uh, waste point of view, a certain um, reliability or some assessment uh, um, indicator is combined with the with the message, and that indicator can then be used to make a distinction in: shall we forward this message to a traffic management center, or shall we await if multiple messages might come in for this specific incident? Um, uh, so in that regard, the message only is: um, uh, someone has been here that has seen some sort of incident. Okay, I just looked up up at the um, the use of ways and this and the, and the, the figures from 2022. There were seven percent of all the um, the users. So um, from Flitsmeister, Park Mobile, and Yellow Brick, ways was uh, like the, 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 the on the top four. You're right. And there's yes, another question. There's a, yeah. Yes. Yes, true uh, that there is a question from Kim Moulisuren. I did. Recognize also one from Mika Kulmala, considering the GDPR discussion in the Netherlands, uh, or is it so that if you share information, information, it is your business? Forget this. Right. Did you hear that one from the base about the GDPR? Yeah. So. Yep. Uh, I think the, the the GDPR questions we just uh, uh, touched upon a bit. Uh, uh, maybe for the the second question, indeed, for the Modi project, um, uh, it's uh, indeed a corridor between the Netherlands and Norway, primarily on the highway, but also on um, uh, on uh, uh, urban streets and even on private areas. So really using these automated trucks on a private uh, port logistical area as well. Um, um, it's, uh, it, it will include platooning, uh, then again, also these vehicles should be able to um, um, uh, drive around um, uh, uh, individually, so that, that's, that's a part of it, but not a specific focus. And it will be presented further on the Nordic uh, Plus Pavilion in, in Lisbon extendedly as well. Hey, um, I, I'm so sorry to say, but I have to finish these uh, Q and A's because it's already 10:46. Um, so thank you for all the participation on this um, on today's session. And um, on behalf of ITS Finland and of course of ITS Netherlands Connect, we would um, we would like to express our gratitude for all the participation of the presenters and also for the ones who are in the webinar. And I hope it was insightful and informative. And as we mentioned earlier, um, this webinar was to create a platform for members from both sides to meet and uh, build relationships. And one of the things um, we would like to offer you, so like everybody shared their LinkedIn address as far as they didn't already did in the invite. So um, that's a great one. And we, uh, Alex and I were gonna send you um, a questionnaire on how, to, uh, how did you perceive this webinar? And also to invite you to Lisbon, as many have said, because um, uh, there's a meetup on uh, on the ITS European Congress in Lisbon, and Marco um, just invited everybody to come to the Nordics Pavilion um, 
just to have some more discussions because our Q&As were too, too, too short. And I'm sure there will be uh, lots of things um, uh, to talk uh, on that uh, on, on this topic and for the coming topics to come for our webinar. So once again, thank you. Thank you all very much for joining us today and looking forward to see you in Lisbon or in our other coming events. Um, thank you very much. Have a nice day.